Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to the Trinity Stamps YouTube channel. I'm so excited today to be playing with some brand new products from this newest release, some stencils, dies, hot foil plates. Yeah, a lot of fun things. So I'm gonna make a card that is five by seven as well as some mini slimline cards today. So we're gonna jump right in with the stenciling, which is the uh, highlight of my cards today. So this is the Lemon and Leaves four piece stencil set. As this stencil that has branches, of course it has the stencil with the lemons, which have all of the solid pieces that you can use for masks on your card. And I'm gonna punch all those out and save them in a little bag inside of the holder for my stencils. Then there are two separate leaf stencils in here as well. So I'm gonna start out by stenciling my lemons. I'm using fresh lemon ink from Altenew and I'm going to just rub the ink on with a blending brush all over. And here's what it looks like. Before I take the stencil off, I want to add dimension. I really wanna bring these lemons to life. So I brought in a darker yellow color. This is maple yellow. And I'm just adding a little ink you can see there to the right or the left hand side of each lemon, giving it a little bit of a shadow. Kind of like if you were gonna color with Copic markers, you have your light, your mid-tone and your dark. And it really helps add dimension and interest to your images. So that's what I'm doing here with the ink. I even brought in a third darker color, Honey Drizzle, and added that a little bit as well. And you can see how that really brings those lemons to life. They just look juicy and delicious. So I lined up the lemons that are etched lines in this stencil right here with the lemons I already stenciled. And that allowed me to be able to stencil in these leaves so that they are going to be lined up. It's very awesome. And now I added some leaves with olive ink and then I'm going to give these a shadow as well. And this is forest ink that I'm adding in here, giving them just some darker spots. So the, I didn't wanna stencil these leaves perfectly solid. I like that there's lighter areas on my first stenciling and then I'm adding in a darker layer with that last darkest color, forest ink. So there you can see what that looks like. It is coming together so pretty. You could leave it just like that. You could add what you could do here besides what I'm doing, which is using the second leaf stencil. You could do the branches right there. That's kind of how it's meant to be. Lemons, leaves, branches. This stencil right here is meant to use if you're gonna do just leaves and branches, which I'm gonna do on my second set of cards. But I wanted this to be really full. So I went in with bamboo ink, shadowed it with parrot ink, and now you can see I have a lot more leaves. And I was able to line that stencil up with the leaves etched in it for the stencil I had previously done. So each of these stencils has etched lines in them that you line up with what you already stenciled. So once you layer them all up, everything is now lined up together. The other thing I could have done, if I wanted those second batch of leaves to be like behind my lemons, I could have used those masks and masked off my lemons, but I wanted it leafy and full. And there you can see how amazing it looks once you add in those branches. I used milk chocolate ink for that, and I am so in love with this. It's one of those things when you finally reveal it, you're like, I can't believe I made that. I love it so much. Okay, we have a new die set that are A7 stackable rectangles with etched edges. Yeah, it's exciting. So I'm going to use the second to the largest to die cut out a panel from this sheet of cardstock that I just stenciled, which by the way was eight and a half by five and a half. And I'm going to make in an A7 size card front. So it's a little bit smaller than a five by seven. And here I'm just taking that die off carefully and showing you the etched line. It just transforms a regular rectangle into something a little bit more elegant. These are the Wildflower die set. 
I used this little flower and cut out, I think, seven flowers. I wanted my scene to have some blooms on it. So I die cut those and set it aside because I had some more work to do on my background. And that was to splatter it with a little bit of this black silk and just give it a little extra something. If you know me, then you already know I love splatter. Okay, this is one of our brand new cut and foil sets. It has a die that cuts the word thanks, a die that makes a shadow for that, and a hot foiling plate that says thanks. And I'm going to bring in some black foil, and I'm going to cut that with this quick trimmer. Both of these two things are from Spellbinders, as is my glimmer machine that is heating up over there on the right-hand side of the screen. This quick trimmer allows me to cut my foil in straight lines. It's just a little bit easier than using scissors. This is so thin and so lightweight, it's easy to get a jagged edge. So I cut that, I'm putting it face up, shiny side up onto my white cardstock that's a very smooth cardstock. I'm gonna tape that plate in place. Now these fo hot foil plates are very um, thick. It's, a, it's a, a lot of surface area to foil. So you wanna make sure your machine is all the way hot. I'm gonna use a shim, that's what that bright piece of paper is, and then I'll put the plates on top. Then when I remove that, I use my two thumbs, pull it directly back towards me, run that right through my dye machine, which you see I brought in and sat right next to my hot foil machine. So there's a lot of, not a lot of movement and jiggling around. We don't want that. And run it through the machine very slowly and very slowly back. My video is sped up a little bit, so go slower than I did. Now here, I it has some overfoiling. That's okay, don't stress about that. You just need a sanding eraser, and you can erase that, and it's gone. Problem solved. And um, I just do a little bit here, and you'll see in the very end, I actually was able to do a little bit more where you cannot even tell it was there. All right, so now um, you can use either the die that die cuts the word things to die cut this out because it's a hair bigger than the hot foil plate, or you can use the shadow die to cut it out, which is what I decided to do. So I'll run that through the die machine, but make sure when you're die cutting out an image that has been foiled that you don't put your tape on it. It will dull out the foil in that area. So just strategically put your tape down and be careful of the hot foiling. I am stacking the sentiment up with three more die cuts behind it so it can be raised up and super heavy duty. I like that. And then this is going about center of my card with a tiny bit of that S hanging off the edge. I just like that look. And here come those super cute blooms. I'm just gonna glue them um, randomly around so they, they kind of look like they're supposed to be there, not just floating in open space, but maybe on a branch. And I think they're really cute. And there's so many more cool things in that wildflower die set. I just use this tiny little flower. It's such a fun die set and a great addition to lots of cards like this one where you just need to add a little extra something. Now I'm bringing in the Andesine Aura Embellishment Mix. These gems are pink with iridescent finish. Oh my gosh, they're so yummy. I can't even say gosh when I wanna say gosh because these are so yummy. Yeah, I love them. And do you see my new friend? The Trinity tool, pickup tool. It has a little waxy end and look at me go with the embellishments. Before this, I struggled quite a bit with my other tool and uh, I didn't with this one. The other end of that tool is a, a sharp pointy tool that you can poke things out of your die or move your little gems around. Love it. All right, so I die cut the largest rectangle from that A7 die set and then I'm gonna die cut out the center of it with a die that is smaller than the die I used to cut out my lemons, my lemon panel. That way I have this frame and I didn't waste all that cardstock that my lemon panel is going to cover up. Um, I, I, I can use it again for something else, which is really important to me because I'm kind of low on black cardstock right now. So saved that for another project. And then I glued that onto a A7 size card base. So that's a five by seven card base. Now I'm bringing in the supporting sentiment stamp set. This goes really well with the hot foil plates that we came out with other word dies that you might have, and the big bold sentiments, which I'm not using right now, but you must check them out. There's like huge, long, bold sentiments you can stamp on your slimline cards. 
I'm stamping so very much with some VersaFine Onyx black ink right below the word thanks like a crazy person when the card's all the way done, because that's how I roll. A little bit of crazy. Yeah. There it is. Isn't it gorgeous? If I don't say myself, so myself. All right, on to the second batch of cards. I am doing just leaves and branches for this card. This means I'm going to use both of those leafy stencils, and I'm coming in, like I did before, with two colors of ink on each stencil to give that shadow look. It's yummy, I love it. Here's the second stencil, just lining up the etched lines on that stencil with what I already inked up. And then I'm gonna have perfect placement. So now I'm coming in with olive ink and forest ink for the second batch of leaves. So Altenu sells their ink pads in sets of four, so I was able to do four colors that coordinate together. And you could just really shop your stash with what you have and create similar looks with ink pads that you already own. And just have fun with different kinds of ink, your distress inks, your oxide inks, your um, atelier inks, they all will work so beautifully with these stencils. So look at that. Imagine this for fall. Imagine this um, maybe with some wintry leaves, maybe in a blue color. I don't know. I think it would be really fun to play with different non-traditional colors. But there they are. I die cut these out with the new stitched stackables mini slimline dies. So I like to make slimline cards or most of my cards that have a border, like my previous card had the black border around the edge. I sometimes like my card base to show. So I'm loving this die set that has all those different sizes of mini slimline dies in it. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. So now I die cut or I quick cut some more foil and I'm going to do the same thanks on each of these three mini slimline cards that I'm going to make because you saw that eight and a half by five and a half panel I was able to die cut three mini slimline panels okay so I'm going to do these one at a time and I put the foil pretty side up the plate face down or um I just put the plate on it and then I was able to put that on my glimmer hot foil machine that was already heated and put the plates with the shim over that and then run it through my die cutting machine once that was hot now you see i didn't have trouble with these ones and the excess foil but it was good that i did so you could see what to do with that sanding eraser okay so back in with that mini slimline stitch die set i die cut the second to the largest die and then i'm going a little bit smaller to create that frame again because i decided well why waste this paper even though it's a smaller piece and then I got smart and I die cut them, you know, both at the same time to create my frame. I'm bringing back in that supporting sentiment stamp set using three different stamps than I used on the previous card to go with thank or the thanks. And I'm embossing those with white powder. So I inked them up with Versamark, poured on my white powder, and I'm heating all of those with my heat gun. Then Back in with the mini slimline stitched set, I'm taking the second to smallest die and using that to die cut my sentiments. So I'll have that stitched border around there as well. And now it's time to assemble all the things. You just wanna remember when you're gluing your paper down to a frame to only put glue on the edge. Yeah, ask me how I know. All right, so now it's time to glue all the pieces together. So I have different combinations of thanks and sentiments that go with them. So I decided to kind of play with the arrangement on each of them and how I put them together just for a little bit of variation. So I have thanks for all you do, thanks from all of us, and just a note to say thanks. So there are my three cards and you can see now I have two stitched borders and I have my card base showing. And having that mini slimline stitch set with all the different layers, there are 12, allows me to do that. And I love it so much. So there's all four of the cards I made today. I needed to build up my stash of thank yous. So I am really happy with these. They, they just have an element that is like special to them with the foiling on there, with the stenciled background that is so gorgeous. I just love it. And the detailed edge on those die cuts really adds that little extra something. 
I thank you so much for stopping by the Trinity Stamps channel today. And if you have any questions or comments about hot foiling, let me know. I've done lots of it and I'm glad to help. And I have more videos for you as well as the rest of the design team on the Trinity Stamps YouTube channel. So check those out. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram too. Thanks for watching. Bye.